All right, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Stand up, please, quick, very quickly. Do these ones. Come on. Stretch. Get the blood flowing. Get it flowing. Yep, to the side. Reach. Reach. Oh, I just wanted to see if you do it, man. You're funny. <laughs> All right, you can be seated. No, no, just kidding. Just, just want everyone to be awake. Because it's... it's yeah, just want everyone to be awake. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for a little bit. Is that all right? Yeah. In Romans chapter 4, verse 13 says this, It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthless. I.e., if you can earn it, what's the point? Paraphrase. Because law brings wrath... And there is no law, and if, if there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, who were initially the, the Jews, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He the father. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. And this is, this is a bit that I love. The God who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. I've got, got a friend at work. And you know, you know how this, I don't know if everyone works, but you know how this at work, you go, what you do on the weekend, blah, 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 blah. So it comes out in conversation that I'm an MC, that, that I like to uh, rap sing and things like that. No one got it, it's all right. Uh, that I'm an MC and she's like, nah, not you. And I go, hey. Relax, yeah, that's, that's, that's you know, I do, you know, and she goes, I cannot picture you for the world rapping. I said, what are you talking about? I go, all right, because me and Julio, who, who won at least one game of basketball today, we did a, we did a CD a couple of years ago, look, I'm going to bring you a copy of our CD, and then you can check that out. So I bring her a copy of the CD, and she listens to it, and next time I run into it, I go, did you listen to the CD? She goes, yeah, and I go, well, you know, she goes, I don't believe it's you. <laughs> like, what do you mean? It? Like, what covers the, um, the sort of a picture of me there, blah, blah, blah. She goes, I still can't see you doing it. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's not you. Point being, she had this image of me in her head, right? Image of who I was. And this is work. I work in an office, so we do the suit and tie, and blah, blah, blah. And to be honest, in the office, I keep, I keep to myself. I, you know, surf the internet all day. No, just kidding. I keep to myself, I'm not, you know, overly, but even with her, you know, sometimes we muck, muck around, joking around, so she knows I'm not a quiet dude necessarily, but she's just got this thing in her head where she can't see me doing that. And, and I'm like, alright, fair enough. And I think a lot of us always have this thing in our head of what we can see God doing and not doing. And it's just a preconceived idea of what we can see God doing and we, and we think, nah, don't believe it. Don't go there, don't want to know. And also about each other, yeah? So sometimes we see each other and we, and we hear things like, man, that dude, Gonski, loser, going nowhere. So Matt mentioned that we were at Perth, um, and what we did, we went around, did a few tracks, and one of the tracks that Matt does, I think he's done it here before, uh, and one of the verses is about his brother. You might know Ev, who's preached here a few times, Evan. And, and, and the verse, really, I love it, I dig it, and the, the thing that I like the most about it is that he speaks in it at the start about how people said that he would amount to maybe nothing. And that he was a, you know, he was a, he was a smart mouth, he was a hoodlum, he was a criminal, he was getting in trouble and people just wrote him off. And said, this dude is going, going nowhere. But the end of the verse speaks about how God touched his life. And changed his life. Now he's a pastor of a church. Which I think, no, not that that's the ultimate goal in the world. No offense. But, do um, you know what I mean? I think, but, but also just, just crazy, like, things that I consider so important. A husband, tomorrow back there, who represented on the basketball court. Yeah. A father to, to, four, to four great kids. You know, and that responsibility that, that he's carrying now, and just that such an important role in life that he's carrying, and people said he wouldn't be nothing. So I think that's the way God sees us a lot of the time. It says, it says there that he's the God who gives life to the dead and sees things that are not as though they were. 
So he doesn't work on the same visual perceptions that we work on. He sees something and he goes, yeah, I know everyone else sees it that way, but not me. And so he looked at Ev at one point and said, everyone thinks you're a loser, but not me. So I'm going to do something in your life. I'm going to turn it around. Because everyone thinks you're going nowhere, but not me. Everyone's saying it to you, but not me. I was at, I was at the, him and Matt's grandfather's funeral. And, and he said, he goes, at there, he gave props to his granddad because the whole family wrote him off, but not his granddad. But just, to, just think about that. Your whole family writes you off and thinks you're a loser. And the whole time God is saying, but not me. Because I've got a plan for your life. Because I want to do something in your life. Against all hope. Abraham, in hope, believed. So he became the father of many nations. Alright, so the whole point is that God gave Abraham a promise. You'll be the father of many nations. Your, 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 your generations that come from you will just fill the earth, alright? That's a short version. So, against all hope, Abraham, in hope, believed. And so he became the father of many nations. Just as, just as it has been said to him. So your offspring shall be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead and they had not had a kid yet. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God but was strengthened in faith and gave glory to God being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. So he hadn't received the promise. And you know what? If you read the story in Genesis, he even sort of took a wrong turn a bit there. But in the end it says that he did not wave out through unbelief because he was fully convinced that God had the power to do what he had promised. See, a lot of the reasons why sometimes we see a situation or we see a person, we see our own lives or whatever and think this is going nowhere, this is not going to change is because we, live, we believe that it is a hopeless situation. The reason we believe it is a hopeless situation is because we've tried everything to do to turn it around and nothing's changed. And also the reason why it's so hard to have faith is because we don't believe that God has the power to do anything about it. Let's be honest. A lot of the times we think it's rubbish. Whether you've been in church or not, a lot of the times we, we, see, we sit around and we think it would be nice if God did something now. But to be perfectly honest, I don't really believe he's capable of doing it. Search your hearts and, 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 and really think about it. When we, we, when we pray, are we really believing that God is capable of doing it or are we asking? I come from a long line of, of churches where, where back in the day where people used to pray like they were begging God. Please God, please. And I'm not dissing them, but, I, but these days I see, I see people praying like that and I'm going, Fair enough, you're really passionate about what you want, but are you begging because you're not expecting anything and you're just so desperate because you don't actually believe that He has the power to do it. But believing that God has the power to do it is the key. Where does God's power come from? Let me read another verse. Romans 1.16 says this, I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. Let me read that in the message version, the same verse. It's news, I am most proud to proclaim this extraordinary message of God's powerful plan to rescue everyone who trusts Him. Starting with the Jews and then right up to everyone else. God's way of putting right shows up in the acts of faith, confirming what Scripture has said all along. The person right standing before God by trusting Him really lives. So the gospel is the, is the power of God. What's the gospel? The gospel is the message that Jesus Christ came to this earth, laid down his kingship in heaven and said, there is, these people cannot fulfill this law that's been given to them. They're, they're just not capable of, of really earning their, their, their relationship with me, earning their salvation with, with me. I'm going down there to make it happen. I'm going to take all their sin on me. I'm going to die for them. And then I am going to come back to life, raise up from the dead, and take that power of sin and that power of, of you know, just everything that seeks to tear us down and squash it. And that there, right there, is the gospel. And that is what he did. And that there, right there, is something that we either believe it or we put it to the side. 